Helping Everyone Live Prosperously or Help Community Development Corporation is partnering with the FAMU Law School to offer the Heirs Property Protection Program. And joining us now to tell us more is Deputy Executive Director Nicole Oriol. Thank you for joining us, Nicole. Thank you for having me. So as an heir myself of property in another state that was handed down through the generations to our family, through our family, um, there are lots and lots of questions. So what is the number one question that you get from people who are in that situation that you've been dealing with? What is heirs property? Mm. That's the first question. They don't know necessarily what we're talking about when we use the current term that they're using it. A lot of the time, a lot of the time they think it's family home. So when we say, hey, do you have a family home that you inherited? Then they know exactly what we're talking about. And then we explain to them that's considered heirs property and we break it down for them. So usually in that situation, grandma or granddad passed away and they said, I want to leave my house to everyone, all of my kids. And they had five or six kids. Well, guess what? You just created heirs property because not one individual owns the property. So nothing can be done with the property unless everybody gets along and how many families can you call out the top of your head where everybody is going to get along with each other to make a decision and that becomes the problem mm. so how does your organization help I'm asking for a friend okay <laughs> <laughs> Um, with the Heirs Property Program, so we created a program called Linking Legacies. And what we did was, based off of information we had gathered from the Federal Home Loan Bank of Atlanta, they, were, they spearheaded this. They said, hey, this is a problem. We're willing to throw money behind it, but get out there and see what you can create. So we were able to come up with this program, Linking Legacies, where we're going to work with the FAMU Law students, the law fellows, to do all of the research behind the properties because we're specifically targeting Eatonville, which is the first black municipality in the United States of America, established on August 15th, 1887. So we have a lot of properties that have been passed down from generation to generation without a will. So that is the problem. The house was passed without a will and now 25 people could own it because of little fractions of ownership over the years. So that's the problem. So heirs property, to fix the property problem, we want to help them with the legal process. As you may know, the probate process can be expensive, and a lot of our families don't even come together with the finances to take care of it. So with this program, we raise enough money to cover the probate process and have all of the legal things taken care of um, to help them clear it up and get the house into their name, the current name of whichever person they may choose. So that's how we plan to at least start fixing the problem, but then we also want to offer them the opportunity to get a will done. Mm -hmm. A will is a part of the problem. And, I, and I, I, I want to, I'm glad you mentioned Eatonville because I wanted to talk about, this is a, a uniquely African-American issue in some ways. Um, it is uh, in so many ways our ancestors telling us that property was important. Yes. So we don't want to lose property to something as simple as taxes. Yes. Talk, can you talk about why that's so important to, to maintain that chain of ownership in the family? Well, that comes back to the conversation of generational wealth. Um, we need to keep the property in the family so that it can keep moving and adding generational wealth to each generation that comes behind. If you lose the property for something as simple as property taxes, and then the house is now back on the market and someone's purchasing it for $300,000, that's money that the family could have made if they sold the property and things like that. So when we have those kinds of conversations with them, they start understanding the bigger picture. But with Eatonville specifically, you know, a lot of them want to stay in Eatonville. So it's a matter of helping them clear the title, get all of the doc, you know, ducks in a row, all the documents taken care of, so they can own it and be able to do something with it. So the whole family can have the equity. Maybe they can put someone uh, through college or they can buy a car for someone. They can do a lot of things if they keep the house and use the equity and leverage it. But those aren't things that we talk about in our community. So they, this is the first time they're hearing it. So a lot of our conversation starts off with education and then you see the light bulb and then we start going into the remedy. So tell us about your uh, partnership with FAMU Law School. I love 
our partnership with FAMU Law School because the students are energized, they're eager, they're hungry, they're ready to go knock on doors and I say, oh, sit down, we're not knocking on doors in Eatonville <laughs> just yet, uh, but we can start here. So what they're doing, they're going into the county property appraiser um, website and they're looking up every single house to see if it's a possibility of heirs. Mm -hmm. There are over 900 properties. They're more than halfway through. Their goal is to be done by this week. Um, but by, we, by doing that and creating a workbook for us to use, then we're sending out letters and saying, hey, you could be a, an heir of this property, and this is a new program, and this is how we can help you keep the property in the family. Because there have been some homes that were sold for like 28000 it was refixed up and everything was great, rehabbed, and when it went back on the market, it was sold for two hundred and eighty nine thousand. And that's just a Home Depot rehab, <laughs> not right. a rehab rehab. Right, right. You never know. I mean, some of these homes are totally, you know, on bricks and boarded up windows, and some are just vacant lots, but they're still owned by someone. They're still owned by family members, whether they're in the state or out of state, which is another challenge. And is there, um, and I I've taken over the property taxes for my families. This is my great grandfather's um, land that he passed down. And I've taken over the taxes. Is there an automatic aspect to how the property transfers from generation to generation? For the person paying the taxes, of course, they would love to hear, because you paid it, it's yours. <laughs> you know, show me the receipt, it's yours. It doesn't work like that. It's nice of you to do that for the family, to maintain it in the family, but until you do the probate process, until you come together, um, you can't do anything else with the property. Because if you build a house, then someone of the other heirs could come and say, hey, I didn't want a house. Mm. So it just makes it more messy. I'm 100% glad you said that. Um, so what are the steps people need to take when they are inheriting this this property that it may have been passed down from the prior generation or generations like mine from you know two generations when you're that far out let's say two generations people have had children people have died there are lots of moving pieces now so the best thing to do is to come together as a family and decide what you want to do with the property and if you can't then I would suggest you find a mediator to come and sit with the family while you guys decide what you're going to do. Because you have to be in like mind in order to move the property. There's no way around it. So we might have to do some family fixing before we can get to some property fixing. Nicole, this has been very valuable, not just to me, but to so many people who are in that situation. Really appreciate you being here with us today. Thank you. Help Community Development Corporation is a faith-based organization located in the oldest black incorporated municipality in America, Eatonville, Florida, which was established in 1887. The agency was created by the Life Center Church founders after identifying a need in this community. More Legal Connections is coming up. Stay with us. Mm -hmm.